Yo, what's up, guys? It's Grady Jared back at it again with me and my co-host Kelsey Conway. Today we got a sweet treat for you guys. We got Dansby Swanson of the Atlanta Braves, local boy, Georgia boy like myself. We're gonna talk about some good things, get into some things more than just ball, um, but also um, just his daily process. And um, there'll be a lot of things for you guys to take away from this. So I hope you enjoy. And here's our conversation with Brave shortstop Dansby Swanson. Grady, I'm pumped. We have on Brave short spot, shortstop Dansby Swanson, and we're getting him in the middle of his season. So first of all, yeah. Dansby, we wanted to say thank you for taking some of your bu busy schedule time for us on Getting Real with Grady Jarrett podcast. And we wanted to have you on for a number of reasons, but one of the main reasons why is you and Grady share a lot of similarities in that you're both from Atlanta and you're now the face of your hometown team, which I think is really cool and a, and a very unique situation. So I wanted to ask you both, does, does it feel like sometimes or when you first got drafted, there was more pressure that came with that rather than if you got drafted in a city that you didn't know anyone or nobody really knew you is there more pressure and what is the best part about that and what's kind of the hardest part about it uh I guess well for me I know Grady got drafted by Atlanta I was drafted by Arizona and I got traded over here like five months into my professional career mm -hmm. and let me tell you the night I got traded Grady you obviously haven't been traded I hope you don't get traded yeah, because not it's only uh, it's tough, right? Like, I, mm -hmm. obviously, I want you to be a Falcon, but at the same yeah. time, like business wise, like that's so tough. Yeah. And I didn't really know how to respond or how to react. Mm -hmm. But I do remember getting about 300 text messages and like 150 phone calls. And yeah. that was like that kind of started off on a rough note because I was like, I don't I, am I going to have to deal with this all the time? You know what I yeah. mean? Like, is this something that. I'm going to have to be dealing with. And luckily it has not turned out to be like that. Awesome. Uh, it's probably been the best thing that's ever happened to me. Um, I think being able to be with family uh, is huge. Being able to be around, you know, the, my best friends that I grew up with uh, and then kind of being able to settle down and have like a home in Atlanta that I can be in consistently is, is, you know, something that, uh, only the good Lord could have had planned because I, I definitely absolutely. wouldn't have done that. Yeah, absolutely, man. You said it's like being in that comfort zone. It's it's really like a blessing because, you know, for 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 me, it was you know it was balancing, like you said, how you got all those text messages and calls. Once you got that balanced, everything else is really just you know it's all good because like for me at the games, you know, I can go out to my mom's house and Connie is go hang out, and then you know when I. I'm fortunate enough to know that I'm a, I'm, you know, I'm a beat in Atlanta, you know, after I'm playing. So I was, you know, able to buy me a, a nice home here and and feel comfortable. And um, if anything, really from uh, like treatment, trainer stuff, I've been comfortable with come before coming out of college, like uh, being able to have that here, um, just access to, um, I don't know, your regular lifestyle, you know, without that full adjustment. But um, I think it's definitely like you said. If you don't know how to balance it, man, it could, it can, it can really hurt a couple guys. I think being away, um, I'm sure y'all, you got teammates like this too. Being away from you know environments that they grew up in is better for them versus you know being in somewhere they grew up in. So I think it all mm -hmm. works out how it's supposed to at the end of the day. But um, yeah. So so yeah, Kelsey, that was a, that was a, that was a great question. Of, you know, finding out the so. it is, it is nice. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because familiarity yeah. with lifestyle is a, is a big one. Right. Yeah. And, and I, and I feel for the people that, you know, they're from somewhere that they love and they're not there and it's oh, hard, yeah, to, you know, like yeah. we, um, we started out, you know, spring training, we're down in uh, Florida for like six, seven weeks. Mm -hmm. Then we started out on the road for another week, week and a half. And man, I was homesick. Like I couldn't wait yeah. to get home. I missed my dog. I missed my bed. Yeah. I just miss all the people that I'm normally spending time with. Whereas in spring training, like, you get up early, you do your work, you play a game, and you go home and you're just sitting at home. There ain't nobody else there. You're just yeah. like you're just like looking around, you know, like yeah. I guess I'll go hit some more golf balls, you know. Like I guess I'll go like how long spring training usually lasts? That's that's kind of like y'all training camp, you know, mindset before y'all start the season, right? It's like, uh six weeks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whew. Man, you know, yeah, Grady, you, you got lucky. If you football players 
I mean, between your schedule and the fact that training camp is really only, I mean, what do you have? Like 15 fully padded practices. He's got six weeks of training training camp essentially yeah, yeah yeah that's tough and all the games the volume y'all play man how, how how do you balance that I, you know i always wondered like um how major league baseball players can balance that 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 schedule is like y'all playing over 100 games it's only 360 days in a year if you take a day off every two days y'all gonna not have enough days to play it's like how do you how do you do that bro yeah well the the craziest way to put it in perspective is so we play 162 games in the regular right. season um usually that's in 180 days so we get 18 off days um and what i what always blows people's minds is if you add spring training and then if you add if you make the whole run the playoffs you play over 200 games um which is it's wild right it's wild it's wild to think about uh part of it i could ask you the same question like how do you how do you once a week go and basically abuse yourself like yeah. tackle people yeah, you know yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and y'all only have one off one off week yeah um it's just it's part of our lifestyle it's just part of what we do um you kind of grow a little bit accustomed yeah. to playing every night but with that comes like plenty of nights where you're kind of just like well this just ain't my night you know like yeah, because yeah, baseball is yeah. so hard you play it so often uh, and then the biggest thing that I think that people don't see is travel because yeah. like, for instance, we have a Sunday night game coming up in Chicago, uh, mm-hmm. this Sunday, we fly to New York after that. Luckily we have an off day, but we'll get in around, you know, three, four in the morning. And mm-hmm. then we play two games against the Yankees come back home. But once again, we won't get home till in the middle of the night and yeah. then, Luckily, we have that day off. But normally, you know, we'll get places at, you know, three, four, five in the morning and have to play that next night. So you're literally mm. sleeping in till noon, one o'clock, just to yeah. get a little bit of rest and then yeah. showing up to get some work done and then and then play. And then you do it again the next night. And it's oh. just it's just crazy how the game of baseball itself isn't like the most physically demanding like oh man that's but, but that mental that. though man that mental but i already know mental, that mental go crazy it's mental and then it's just the grind of doing it so much like that yeah. adds up yeah i was gonna say like just hearing you talk about the schedule man that that the mentality of it is something that people you know casual fans i'm sure just don't really understand what it takes and i mean even adding all that travel to it bro i, I never i that's that's crazy you gotta <laughs> <laughs> go somewhere yeah. go somewhere after the game take a nap play another game well yep. so we had Grady's mom on our podcast, uh, the episode before you, and she told us that Grady was actually a really good baseball player in high school. Uh, so, Grady, I guess it sounds like you made the right decision in going to play football well, you know what? professionally. You know, you know, I was because nobody in my family ever played baseball, so I was really natural at it. But I stopped. You know, I stopped playing in high school because um, there was. I don't even, there was a situation with this coach and I was like late to do something. I was, I was doing some kind of training thing, but he would not let me sign up for the baseball team. So, and then from then I was like, I, don't, I guess I just won't, I mean, I won't play no, cause the football was my love. I know I want to play football, but, um, but yeah, I think my mama, I, I was good, but I think she kind of hyped me a little bit. I ain't gonna lie. Like I'm not even <laughs> going to sit there and <laughs> it's like, Mom. it's like, and then being a professional athlete, you know, it's easy for people always to be like, Oh, I can do that. I can do that. No, to be a professional at the highest level, it takes a lot of skill, a lot of work, mm-hmm. dedication. So I ain't even about to sit there and make that comparison. You know what exactly. I'm well, and like my my thing too is, why do you think there's only been a handful of guys that have ever played yeah. at the highest level in, in in two sports? Because it's almost impossible, man. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. the ability to do that. Like the only one out right now would probably be Kyler. Yeah. He'd he'd, he'd Kyler be the only one that would have mm-hmm. yeah that would have a chance. Yeah, I think, but like. It's just a different. It's just a different angle because you got to think too, like body, like body wise, like mm-hmm. how many baseball guys. I mean, there's some big baseball dudes, but how many baseball guys could go play like in the NBA? Yeah, Be, like purely from size, probably not. Yeah, yeah. you know, I, football dudes too. Yeah, it's crazy because it's like it's just easy for fans sometimes to just think like I see it on TV. That's a mm. baseball. I actually enjoy going to baseball games, but you know, when you see on TV, like, oh, it's slow. Okay, do that. But I ain't, uh, you get out there, boy. It's almost like a, a casual person 
going on the golf course. Tell him go swing a golf a golf club. He's like, oh, shit, this ain't. Oh easy. my gosh! Yeah. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about golf now. I, I'm uh, trying to get better. Trying to get yeah, better. I, gotta, I definitely got to get better, man. I just came from a um, charity tournament of that way. I, I, I can I can I can connect with him. I just can't keep it keep it keep it straight online. We'll talk about that another time. <laughs> well, so I, Dansby, you just brought up Kyler Murray. So we know that you're a big football fan and we know that you're a big Falcons fan. So I wanted to ask you a little bit about how you became such a big Falcons fan. What are some of your favorite Falcons memories? And uh, you were at the Super Bowl, right, in Houston. Mm-hmm. And just uh, talk because you know who had his coming out uh, game. That game was the uh-huh. guy that's oh, I, oh yeah, uh, the <laughs> guy that's the host of this podcast. So when did you become such a big Falcons fan? And I mean, how much football do you watch? Uh, man. So I became a Fal- I've kind of always been a Falcons fan. Uh, tried to watch every Sunday growing up, and then once I started getting into high school, I like really, really got into it because I feel like I started to understand it more too um and my uh we'd go over to one of my best friend's house his name's logan marshall and another story about him in a minute but we and my other best friends we would go over there watch games on sundays um so it just kind of became like our thing uh to do and then i'd say the toughest part about watching games now is because our season overlaps just a little bit so when we play on sunday we normally play at one o'clock Mm. which is when y'all normally play unless it's, you're either on the West coast or, like you know, you got Sunday night football or something. Yeah. Um, or, but even if you play Monday night football, we play Monday night normally. So yeah. um, I spend a lot of money on NFL game pass, baby. So I can watch games, <laughs> you know, like I, I watch, I watch the condensed version after the game's over uh, that whole thing. Uh, favorite Falcons player. That's tough. Um, I feel like I was always a big Roddy White fan because um, that was kind of like, I guess, a little bit in my like heyday of high school. Yeah. Um, so I'd say I, I would say that he he would kind of be like the one that I mean, everybody could say Matt. Everybody could say Hooley. You know, like that'd be the easy yeah. one. But I say Roddy was one of my favorites. Um, and then one like one of my sneaky favorites was Asante Samuel for like the year that he was here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love me some Mr. Pick Six. Um, but uh yeah, I was in Houston. That's usually where the conversation ends. Um yeah, yeah, yeah I understand. Well, it doesn't yeah. it doesn't have to end when we're on a podcast with Grady Jarrett because that game had the Falcons won. He probably, I mean, sometimes I think they always give it to the quarterback, which I just think is unfair if they give the MVP. But, yeah, but if you know, we'll I had a that. vote, I had that. a vote, Grady would have been the Super Bowl MVP. Yeah, you know, that was, that was fun. That How was many sacks do you have, Grady, on Tom Brady? Three? Yeah, three of them. It was almost four, and then like one, the fourth, man, it was just, it was, it was a good, it was a good day personally, but it was a hard, hard day to. To bring up, you know. Yeah. I no, I, I, <laughs> trust me, I was like, I, I, so I took my buddy Logan Marshall with me. And it was like, talk about like the biggest roller coaster of emotions of like my life. Um, yeah. I, I sometimes tell people, and you can put this in the podcast because I always think it's funny. I'm like, I think sometimes I like the Falcons more than I like the Braves. Like, <laughs> that's, how I, <laughs> that's, that's how I feel sometimes. Like, that's how, like, passionate i am i'm not like a tv yeller and i'm not a yeller in general like at yeah. games because yeah. a i understand and b what's that gonna do like yeah. i i have no idea yeah. about football like i played once when i was seven yeah you know what i mean so um but no i, I remember grady's little coming out party i remember that <laughs> yeah i'm trying to we're, we're trying to figure out if he's gonna have a sack dance this season we had ray lewis on the show and i asked grady i was like we're we gonna give the fans a sack dance and he said he'd uh he's he's uh, deciding so who know, knows we're, maybe we're, you'll we're, be seeing that certain, you know this, yeah i mean you just make year. plays man you just you just make your plays going about your that, business, you know yeah that's i mean <laughs> sometimes it's like more swaggy to yeah. not do nothing because it's like bro all right i've been there done that <laughs> do, this, do this yeah do this but yeah hey, so. I, I i do got a question for you though What's up? so it's so in obviously a super bowl setting yeah that's you know the biggest game yeah is there something like, is there just something different about, like, your mentality when you go into big games? Because 
I just know for me, like personally in bigger moments, somehow, some way, God blessed me with the ability to like the game feels like yeah. it's in slow motion yeah. in the bigger moments. It's usually just in like the regular moments where I yeah. kind of just kind of yeah. can get a little like relaxed instead yeah. of dialed in. Yeah, no, I definitely feel you on that. And I, I feel the exact same way. It's crazy going into the Super Bowl. Um, we were in Houston and, you know, they we do the pre the pre stadium walk and um, they got all the what they know when your team arrive for the pre stadium walk like a day before. And uh, just seeing my name up there in the on the big jumbo trial, man, and just being like, wow, this is really like, you know, like this is this is this is about to happen. Like this is a dream come true, you know. But for me, I've always been prime time games. I'd be ready. I would be tuned in. Like it is like. Uh, I remember in, in, even like in college, we used to play like the, you know, one double A schools. I'd be like, bro, I don't even want to be out here today. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but like, but like, you know, com, the big time games, you know, everybody tuned in. It just bring out the best thing. I think that bring out the best in true competitors. But as you know, everybody not built for that. You know, some people can show up when it's, you know, so the regular stuff. But when the pressure on, you know, some some people shut down. But, you know, being blessed to be able to be able to go into that mindset and just know it's like, it's like, you know, it's go time. Like an example for that for me this year was like it was hard playing with no fans in the stadium this year. Mm -hmm. That that was terrible. And then as the season went on, some places would be a little more lenient, some places would be a little more um, strict. But I remember we went to Kansas City this year. Man, but they about had they stadium packed out. And I'm feeling mm -hmm. like and I love to play. One thing about me, I love to play in hostile away games. Like, cause it feel like everybody like against you. Just going crazy. So it's like even like when we played San Fran last year, you know, these these past couple of years have been tough for us. But I feel like I've played my best games against the best teams. And uh just because that animosity, whatever it may be, or just the you know, the doubt that people have that you're gonna get crushed by this team, it just bring out the best in me. So um, so yeah, so like that's 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 some like a motivation for me. And um, but like so I got like a question for you. So like as a just as like a competitor, you know. Obviously, being the best of the best of what you do, being, you know, top pick um, growing up or as a professional to this day, even what like what do you find as your biggest motivation to continue to get better and be better? Or, um, you know, when you when you look back and reflect on your path, like what was the thing that pushed you to be like, look, I'm going to be the best I can be. And, you know, it, it got you where it got you. I I think you can relate to this. Uh when you're when you're a competitor and you care and you want to win, like mm -hmm. there isn't really anything else that you need because how I was raised was to always like do my best and mm -hmm. to be the best that I could be in anything that it was. Like if it was in school, if it was in history class, if it was in whatever, you know, it was a an expectation of my household to make really good grades. And mm -hmm. my parents would always ask if I was, you know, struggling in a class or something, they would say, are you working to get the grade that you want? And if the answer was no, then I needed to, Tighten up. you know, check myself. And yeah. if it, if the, you know, work ethic was where it needed to be and I just wasn't getting the grades, they were okay with that. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like that's just kind of really what's that, that whole principle has really guided me throughout my life because I want to be the best player that I can be. Yeah. I want to be the best player, you know, in the world. Right. So yeah, that, yeah. that work stays consistent to that. Um, and there are times where it can slack. I mean, we're human, right. And Absolutely. it's just a matter of how quickly you can recorrect yourself um, and get yourself where you need to be, especially like in this game, like first 11 games for us in general, haven't been great mm -hmm. uh, nor personally. And it's like, you, got to kind of take a step back and be like all right i have 151 games left yeah, yeah. i just like take a chill pill for a second yeah get back to what makes me me um but i would say the the in 2017 it was my first full year in the big leagues and i was terrible dude like mm. i had to have been the worst player in the big leagues oh, i had man. to have been <laughs> and with with that came Is that jump that jump is a, is a substantial jump from it uh, well it was I came up the year before, like the last month of the season, and I okay. killed it. Okay. I think partially what happened was, you know, when the league starts to know you, yeah, right. Yep. The second yep. year is usually the harder <laughs> year because everybody knows you now. Yeah, people call it. And something. obviously, a little bit too of like, 
having that early success, it was very easy to get caught up in the like, oh, like I can do this, you know, yep. instead of it being the, the quiet confidence, it was a little bit more on the arrogant side. And yep. obviously baseball has a really, good way really good way of humbling you. Yep. Um, so it kind of allowed me to get back to work and get back to the things that made me successful. And then what's really helped me over the last couple of years has been uh, I work with the, with like a mental coach and we do a lot of different okay. um, things to basically, I struggle with like anxiety issues and mm -hmm. um, things like that. So mm -hmm. we've done a lot of work to like get me through uh, anxious moments from the past, like the, the yeah. you know, the trauma from being, a really bad baseball player. Like there's some built up yeah. in there, you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and even now, like when I start going through spurts, like it's really easy to get anxious about performance and anxious yeah. about failing and those kinds of things. So that for me has been like the biggest separating factor moving forward is like dealing with those things. Like we always talk about like mental health is a, is a big deal. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of it is, is, we try, I try and look at more of like mental wellness more so than anything, like try and keep it in the positive direction because that was holding me back way more than any of the physical stuff. Man, that thing, that, that mental thing is huge, man. The mental thing is huge. I, 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 I've thought about um, reaching out to like a mental coach though sometimes because I feel like there's sometimes where sometimes, most of the times, I'm sure you can say you lock, like you locked in, but it's like when you get in that. I don't know if it's like a slump or, you know, you just, it's just something ain't right. Like you playing bad. Like if, if for me, like if I'm that like getting reach blocked or somewhere, like I just can't, or I've, if I'm going, I'm taking my shots, I'm just missing. So now I'm hesitating. So it's like, that's, that's something good. I'm I'm glad you dropped that gym on me, man. Cause that's, that's something I might, I might look into. Cause that, that's, yeah, well, uh, man, immediately when we start going bad, yeah. like this is my real passion talking about this kind of stuff. Cause when we start going bad, yeah. our first thought is we go, why am I not doing what I normally do? Yeah. Then you start to convince yourself that you're wrong, that something is wrong, that yeah. you're, like, and then you start to make an adjustment for something that you never need to make an adjustment for to begin with. I throw everything off. And then it, it just goes in this like cycle. And then you get back to the problem where you're still failing because you mm -hmm. haven't made an adjustment and yeah. you go like this. And for me, what I've learned is you basically like in those moments, uh, like you said, you get in a funk or whatever, even just life happens. Like you get yeah, in a funk, like, my dog's sick or, you know, like I haven't, Mal is, you know, out conquering the world playing soccer and yeah. I haven't seen her in a month. Like it's, yeah. it's hard and you can get in a funk and it's like, what core things do you have that are like pattern interrupters is what we mm -hmm. call them. Yeah, um, okay. So like for me, if I just go and like shoot around, like play basketball just by mm -hmm. myself, just go shoot around. Like that's a pattern interrupter. Gotcha. Or if I'm struggling at the plate, sometimes I'll only go into the cage and just like hit left-handed just mm -hmm. to have fun. You know, yeah. just there's certain like pattern. Sometimes yeah. it's having it's like a bottle of up. wine with my friends. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. it, it's uh like we have our like little pattern interrupters that can kind of like get you out of the cycle, like just mm -hmm. get you out of it to back to Grady being Grady or Dansby being Dansby. Got you, man. That's awesome. Well, Grady – we got to let Dansby go. He's got a game. He's got probably got a lot of stuff he's got to do um, before his game. But Dansby, thank you so much for joining us on Getting Real with Grady Jarrett podcast. And we wish you the best of luck this season. And hopefully we'll we'll see you out at a Falcons game, maybe sporting a 97 jersey sometime soon, huh? Sorry, Bentley <laughs> popped in the picture. Yeah, oh, I'm down for that. I'm down yeah. for that. Yeah, definitely. I got to shoot you something too, man. I'll shoot you like a jersey or something, son. Yeah, please do. I would. I'd yeah. love that. I'm getting the basement finished right now, so awesome for sure. And I'll send you something back. So yes, sir. Yes, sir. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Thank you for coming on, man. And we can link up, link up one day, hang out, whatever. It is. Yeah, no, I appreciate you, brother. All keep, right, man. Keep doing it. You. You Thank you, Dansby. Well, that was really cool to listen to you and Dansby talk about the mental aspect of how you guys go about perfecting your craft. And mm -hmm. although baseball and football are very different, there's so many similarities in terms of what it takes for you to mentally and physically get to the level that you need to every day. And I, I cannot imagine having to do that every mm -hmm. single day like Dansby has yeah, that's to. Tough. Yeah, that's, the, that's a lot of respect for that. I, I would be horrible <laughs> as a baseball player because I think I internalize things way too much. And I, mm -hmm. I think it'd be all up in my head and I 
whew, yeah, yeah. Um, it takes a strong, it takes a strong mental human to be able to play at the level that Dansby is playing at. And I, I just thought the way he kind of was so honest and transparent about his struggles was, mm-hmm. was really interesting to listen to. So it, it brought up a question in my head. You, like we talked about Dansby, you kind of put the rest of the NFL and the world on notice about who you were as a player mm-hmm. during the Super Bowl when you had three sacks. And yeah. ever since then, you've been on a trajectory where you've just been exploding. Mm-hmm. What did it take for you to get there? Like, did you, after your rookie season, have to create a plan for yourself? And have you ever been in a funk? And what did you do to get out of it? Um, You know... For me, my rookie year, you know, it was it wasn't as as fast as I wanted it to be, but I took every opportunity, like internalized like my frustrations and whatever it may be to play more, and just was like I made the decision like when I get my opportunity, I'm gonna just go out there and do my best. And mm-hmm. um, towards the end of the as the year got going, I you know I got better and better and finished out um, you know doing 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 a solid solid rookie season and mm-hmm. um, and. Um, and then I think, then you know, going to the second year, now I'm a full time starter, and it was some bit more ups than downs, but and it was still trying to just find my way in the league, you know, and um, and it was really just just you know repetition and stuff like that, and 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 I don't think there was like a, a funk time because every time I'm just kind of like just trying to get a little better and better, but it's also when you know what you can do, and it's like something that's like holding you back. So like for me, um versus like getting away from the game to try to reset i had to kind of like just dive into it more and just commit more and whether that was watching more film of you know other guys other than myself or um um you know the thing that and also uh, and like the biggest uh, i guess pattern breaker for me was it but it had something to do with the game but i love to like work out and being mm-hmm. like in the gym, like even mm-hmm. away from, like, you know, I do everything that's supposed to be for uh, football. You know, I'm going to work out at the gym, do practice, da, da, da. But when I get in that gym by myself, that's that's the biggest um, therapy for me. Yeah. Like, even to this day, like, like just working out, I got I got to tra- have two sessions of training and I'll just, you know, I'm going to find something to do and just work out, cut some music on. But in, and then it may be like, you know, um, a friend might want to come in and work out. I just need that time alone real quick, mm-hmm. you know. And that's just how I, how I, how I get in my head, you know. And because uh, I'm not a big video gamer, um, yeah, yeah. So I mean, or whatever it is. So I just you know chill, watch movies or something. And um, but solo time in the gym is is really really big for me. But um, I feel like when I turn that corner for for like you said, like after that after that Super Bowl, that's when I realized like you know I can really like be good, like really good. <laughs> I'd be pretty good at this thing. <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> And that get, I think that gave me the confidence after that to know that I could be as good as I want to be, you know, with just with the work I put in and then just the growth that I show. And then I, so, I mean, that's what I say. Like every year I just, I keep, I keep fighting to ascend because I just want to find out ways in my game where I can get better, be better and stay coachable and, um, and just keep myself humble because like Dan's we talk about, it's easy when you had that success um, to, to, you know, let, hear how good people telling you doing, that you're doing so good, pat on the back, and before you know it, boom! Like you, it's, it's just a, it's just a um, shell shock, and you so far behind eight ball because you thought you was doing good while all these other people was out here working. Mm-hmm. So um, you don't never want to fall into that because in this professional league, it's a revolving door. Somebody coming every year, every time they trying to take your spot. And at the end of the day, your team love you and they they want the best for you. But everything is about what have you done for me lately? So I mean, I mean, it's like you got to perform. You know, you know, owe nothing. Like, um, and that's, that's the biggest thing that guys have to wrap their mind around is what you did last year. It don't, it don't matter. You know, we talk about the Super Bowl, you know, just for part of my accolades, but for me, um, I want to get back to a Super Bowl and, and win it and win the MVP, you know what I'm saying? And win the Super Bowl and whatever it may take. Cause just to, that, 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 that would it that da, 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 to the to the day I stopped playing, you know, that's that's a that's a goal of mine, you know, to to get back and chase that. But um, as long as I do my best to get that, I'm gonna be okay at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? But I don't wanna just, you know, ride on the past stuff. I just wanna continue to get better. So 
That's yeah, I think it's you're in football and in your position with your position is it what how many sacks you get is a factor. You know, people yeah, look at the end yeah. of the day how many sacks is great. And I know a lot of coaches will try and tell you, you know, it's not all about sacks, and mm-hmm. it, it is not. It's not mm-hmm. like you, there's so many plays that you make that aren't on the stat sheet, yeah. but like that's a part of it for Dan yeah. to be how he's hitting, what his um what his batting average is. It's like, mm-hmm. who cares what Dan Spee's batting average was last year? It's about mm-hmm. what is his batting average right now? How is he yep. playing? And if he's not getting the job done, they don't care that he's the starting shortstop. If there's someone that's p- swinging the bat better than him, yep. you know, so I think it's you guys, your sport's similar in that. And I, it sounds like you both have the right mental, um, the right, mentality of how you go about knowing that and staying in front of it. So you, you talked about how much working out is like a release for you. And Mm -hmm. I'm the same way. Um, I know last year during quarantine, you Mm -hmm. told us a little bit that you're big, you were a big Peloton guy. Um, what, what are some of your favorite things to do from a workout standpoint? Do you have a gym in your house? Do you, how how often do you ride Peloton? Can the listeners of Grady Jarrett podcast ride with you? Yeah. So I, I definitely, I got a a gym in my house. It was a, I was like a a guest bedroom in the, in the basement when I uh, bought my house and Mm -hmm. gutted it out. It had the perfect space, made a nice gym in there. And, um, and you know, maybe when we do the, do the show we can post a picture of it or whatever mm-hmm. but um so yeah so i, I do I, I got the peloton um i'll just do like little certain classes i love like the the um like interval classes um do you have a favorite instructor uh, a favorite instructor and then like <laughs> playlist like uh I, playlist? I don't have a peloton but i've heard there's like some yeah good, so it's like it's like, like a pop of, rides <laughs> yeah so it's like pop rides <laughs> Hip hop rods, '90s, '80s, R&B, whatever it may be, they 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 got that thing planned out now. But uh, you know, I like uh, the instructor. Uh, her name is Tunde. She's 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 a beast. If I click on her, I know I'm getting work. Um, Alex Toussaint is really good. Mm-hmm. It's a um, it's a it's a, it's, it's, it's a couple more that I like because I mean I just do like little random classes and stuff. I usually do like a my I most oftenly do a 30 minute ride. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's that's mm-hmm. like a and it's some um, kind of, I know it's gonna be intense, not too long. And for me, the, the seat kind of hurt hurt my back. <laughs> but uh, I just now started doing my forty minute, my forty five minute rides. Mm-hmm. So I do that like maybe like twice a week or something. In addition to all the training and stuff, you know, if I wasn't doing like certain stuff, I could ride more. But I ain't. I gotta be good for training too, cause they they put they put that work on you know. It, yeah, it, it's, good. it's fun. And then um, I got like woodway treadmills and stuff. So it, it, it's fun. I got everything. I have some horror stories from woodway train, the woodway tra- really? treadmills from college. Oh my oh gosh. My God. Oh no, they they a beast now. They a beast. Yeah, <laughs> like nothing will humble you more when you're like, oh, I'm in shape, and then you have to power <laughs> the treadmill on. And so as you're yeah. like, oof, yeah. I am dogging yeah. it right no, now. No, I got that at the training facility. I spent a lot of time on that. I got a, one of the tra- training spot I go to is Vitality. And I got one at the house, so and if they 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 the uh, big deal, big boys. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, we we get it in on there. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, another great conversation with you. I thought it was awesome that we were able to have another local Atlanta guy who's a star of his team Absolutely. and Absolutely. and having the brave having a Braves player on in in the thick of the Brave season is mm-hmm. is pretty cool for us too. Yeah, that's super cool. That's super cool. I really, really appreciate him for doing that, taking the time out and to do that. And, you know, got got to go to work. So that just shows his commitment to his love for Atlanta Falcons. Football. Yeah, and Grady Jarrett. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so awesome. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Getting Real with Grady Jarrett podcast. We look forward to talking with you guys soon.